Hello and welcome to another Scratch tutorial. So today, um, I've been having so I, I've been having some issues, so I haven't been able to post for a while. So today we're going to be doing like a very so a series of short things to teach people stuff about how to use Scratch. All of these have been extremely useful to me when I make games. So I think that everyone else would like to hear these or at least different parts. So since I know that mo most people are just looking for one specific thing. I'm going to put timestamps in the description, so it'll be a little link, so you just click on the link, and then it'll take you to that part of the video. So, so let's start with, um, uh, let's start with cloud variables. So, first thing, you need to be a scratcher, so that's someone, so the way you become a scratcher, sorry, my mouse is doing weird things. It's flickering, that's Okay. All right. So um so um you have to be a scratcher first to be able to use cloud variables. So to become a scratcher um you have to have some shared projects. You have to spend a certain amount of time on scratch. So what I found is uh I've made I've made three total accounts. One of them is a collaboration account, one of them is a test account, and one of them is my account. Well, my normal account, um, and um, in my experience, it took about a month working pretty much constantly on one account. Um, you have to love and favorite some projects. If you don't know how to do that, you click these two buttons at the bottom of the project. You have so you have to love and favorite some of the projects. And then also you have to share some projects. You also just have to spend some time on Scratch. I think it helps if you post on Scratch to discuss. Only do relevant things, though, not just spam. Um, just go to discuss.scratch.com or whatever it's called. Uh, just look up Scratch to discuss, and then you can like help. You you can like um, you can. It, like welcome new scratchers and you can help people with with problems they're having like like um you can also just have discussions about different things scratch could do anyway so that's briefly on scratch discuss so now if you are a scratcher and you know you become a scratcher you get a message um the messages are right here so you click on messages and then you'll have a message that says um do you want to become a scratcher and then you just click the you click the like click your link and then you click become a scratcher so you can do things like but you can post more quick more often anyway so now if you're if you are a scratcher only if you're a scratcher you can make cloud variables so if you go to make a variable you can make a, a name for it so let's just name it cloud and then so you want to have it selected for all sprites and then you select cloud variable and then you click OK. So that's a, something I'm going to touch on what just popped up on my screen. So what a cloud variable is, is um, so let's say so we have one variable that's for this sprite, only one variable for all sprites and one cloud variable. So the one for all sprites or one, the one for just this sprite you cannot access on the, the, uh, the backdrop or the other sprites. The one for all sprites you can access access on the backdrop or all other sprites. But the difference between a cloud variable and an all sprites variable is that cloud variable people on different computers can change the number, and it will be shared between those computers. Apparent Scratch apparently has like a one second refresh at max. Um, I found it to be a lot more than that, but um. It is used sometimes in cloud games. Um, like, check out Griff Patch 3D Laser Tag. It's a live 3D game where you sh um, launch um, you launch lasers at each other and try to eliminate each other. Sorry, trying not to get age restricted on YouTube. Um, but um, so you can have like things like. So, the so some of the issues and limitations with cloud variables are, um, sorry, um, I just obsessively click things sometimes. Um, so, first thing, they have a limit of one hundred and twenty-eight characters. 
So if you have something really long, you'll only be able to do up to 120 characters. So that means if you're encoding like expositions and words and stuff, then it will be very hard to write a bunch of text. Like I, I've made a safe chat recently. It works in theory. It can only encode up to four letters because it also encodes username and time. And that and my encoding system is very, very, um, well, it's a little bit, one letter gets encoded to a really long string of numbers. So the reason I have to do that is because cloud variables only support letters. So, or, oh, sorry, only support numbers. You can't type letters or special characters. So you have to build an encoding system that converts letters to a series of numbers. So binary is already way too long. So I have something a little more efficient that uses one through zero through nine but it's still not efficient enough to be able to encode lots of words and stuff. So the best thing I, the best thing that cloud variables are used for, sorry, and yeah, change my mouse. Okay, hang on, my mouse stopped working. That's me taking the battery in and out, okay. Yay, it's fixed. So, sorry, my, Okay, I'm having these weird mouse flickers. If anyone knows what that is, please comment. It's probably just an issue, a glitch. I don't really care that much. But, um, so the best thing to use this for is high scores, like in a game. So, like, everyone has a high score to work towards. And then if someone else gets a high score, it will change it on everyone's device. You just have to make sure you don't get a really, really long a really, really high scoring game that will use up over 128 characters. Um, yeah, that, that's the only issue with cloud variables, I think, is the limit and not supporting letters. Actually, just the limit, because if, if you can, if you could encode it. Oh, also, as a side note, normal variables have a character limit of 10,000 something. So, um, that, Though you're pretty safe there unless you're like calculating pi or something, which I've tried to do with Scratch, but it you it limits how many numbers you can solve up to. It took me 20 minutes to fill a whole variable. Okay, so the next thing on the next thing we're going to cover is importing and exporting lists. So let's make one list called export and one and one called import. Whoops. <laughs> I made a variable. All right. All right. So now we have these two ver er, lists. So what you do in the list is um, there's different items. So you can click plus to add an item or, or enter. So three, four, five, six, I. We can just do something like that. I'm just going to type random stuff in here. Um, and then if you click on your little variable or for export, and it, it puts a space between all each of the items, then you can also get this, this, um, this uh, block, sorry. Um, and my mind shut down for a second. <coughs> and then item one is three. And then item five is high. And then you'll get those variables. So that's how you can let, so like, you can like check things in the list, like repeat length of list. Um, then like add this item to list, add this item to list. Um, um, and then, and then this is very good new variable, new, new variable. So if you say, um, item number of four, it's the second value, so you get that. It's so awesome. They didn't have that in old Scratch. And then you also have this, so if it contains a thing. So right now, so it does contain a three. Um, then show and hide, length, just little things, and then adding different things. So you can add things either by clicking the plus in the editor or by adding in the code. So I, I prefer to add in the code, but most people don't. So... If you if you need to bring one list, so let's say these are in two different projects that export is in in one project and import is in a different project. So 
what you have to do is you have to right click on the list and click export and then you will it will download right here so see it right here now I can take this I can drag it whoops that's my go 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 Godot whatever oh and this is for a white list for a uh, safe chat <laughs> uh, ignore that <laughs> I can't find any of my tabs on here um, that's from my school account um, and then if I click import right here then I can go to desktop I can go and then I have these different um, folders so this folder is uh, gun sound effects so that I, I did that in a different project Oops, I said the G word. Poop. Okay. So if we click export.txt and click open, it it imports these. So if I also open the text file like this, it has these on different numbers, and then you can also edit it like hello. So then if I do control S, maybe file save. Okay, that, that is control S. And then I go back to here and then I click import import again. And then I import the same the same thing. You'll have the next thing. So you can edit that. So that's importing and exporting lists, which I think is super useful. But everyone everyone thinks differently. Okay. So now I'm just gonna delete the sprite. Now we're going to make a sprite huge. So I'm just going to type some text. So, hi. I don't, why, why do I keep saying hi today? I don't know. So let's make this really big. All right, so Scratch's sizing system is very interesting and pretty unique. So you can set the size to different sizes things so let's change the size by 10 a couple of times size size but you see it stops see that I'm still saying change size by 10 um, let's see what size is it right now the size is 114 percent so if we say 500, it's still just 114. So the way that so the way that this this works is it it measures how much how much space this takes up. So it goes from like the top corner to the bottom corner. I don't really know how it does it, but it measures like the outside box of how much drawing is on the thing. And then it allows it to get a certain size so that it can't get any bigger than the screen or much bigger than the screen. It can go, you, you can kind of drag it off the screen if you want to, but it also doesn't let you like make things go off the screen in the code it's all just it's all bound to the edge um so it i i know i do this sometimes but i really want to make this huge so i want the size to be 500 so if we go into costumes and we make another costume and we zoom in really far and we do this one then we take our pointer and make it smaller. Sorry, it's getting kind of hard right here. You see how tiny that is now? So now, what we do, you might have already figured this out. Oh, this is also why I'm putting timestamps in because a lot of people have figured this out on Scratch. I'm not the first one. In fact, I got the idea from someone else. I don't remember who. So you want to switch costume to costume two, which is the tiny little purple one, dot. Um, then set size to five hundred percent. Then switch costume to costume one. So now, since it's at costume two, it will let it get really big. Then if it switches costume to costume one, it will retain that size. So now you have a high this big. Oh. 
there we go. Trying to drag it there. Um, and then you can make this as pretty much as big as you want. Like, um, let's have it go to zero, zero, just to see if we can see it. Yeah, this is how big it is. So you, we could make this really big. That's probably max, right? Yeah, and then if we switch costume to costume one, yeah, it's huge. So now, that's how you make a sprite huge. Um, you can also make a new variable called, or not new variable, um, called set size to set size to, and then just call this size. So then you get this, and so you just clip it on here, and then you take this and put it here. So, so now this input, so this is, so this, if I type something in here, that will be what this is, this variable. So if I say set size to 200, then it will set the size to 200. Now you just have one nice clean block to do that. Um, if you don't really understand what I just did, go watch my, um, my, what's it called? Sorry. Um, go watch my, um, custom, um, block tutorial. Um, alrighty. So, now we can make a block, so now we can make a sprite huge, um, we can add things to lists, and also we can make cloud variables. Last thing I'm going to do is to teach you how to make something move in a straight line with with two variables. So, so let's just say you have change x, change y, and direction. How do we, so the way we we have to figure out how to make it move in a in a straight line. So we have to go so. So you have direction, then you have to change x and y. So when when a sprite moves in the direction, so it's this is basically the equivalent of the move blank steps because it moves it it will move a certain number of steps in in the same direct in the in the same direction. So but we have to use change x and change y. So this is incredibly hard unless you've done geometry. Unfortunately, I haven't, but I already know how to do this. So what you do is you get um, this thing that says ABS, which actually means absolute value, so it removes the sign. So if I say 1, that's positive 1, but there's no plus in front of it. But if I put negative 1, it's also 1, and the absolute value is a representation of a distance from 0. But what you want is sign, so this is a wave function. So you want to put this in X. Uh, f first, you want to get a multiplication one. Put this on one side of the multiplication one and get, make this sign of direction. So now, a sign is a wave function. You don't really need to know that much about it um, for for the purposes of this. Um, a sine wave, all, but but a sine wave is you would get it. A sine wave if you attached a marker to the end of a circle and then rolled the circle so it looks like. Like um, I'll look it up. All right, images. So it would it would look like this. So basically, I'm not going to get into the trigonometry because it's super complicated and I can't really explain it very well. Talking, I'll admit that. So. Basically, what this does is it measures it measures the relationships between two of the sides of the triangle. I'm not really going to get into it. You can look it up if you want. It's a little confusing, but there's some pretty good diagrams and stuff online. Like it's it's not that hard to find out. Then for the multiplication thing, you want to multiply this. So this is how many pixels you want it to move. So if you wanted to move five pixels, this is what. So this would be one pixel. Th just this, uh, and th since direction is zero or ninety, I guess uh, it'll end up being one. So it will move five pixels 
on X because since it's a 90, it's pointing directly X and noth nothing will move on the Y axis. So it will move five pixels only on the X axis. Um, and if it was, if the direction was negative 90, it would just be negative five. Then what you want to do is duplicate this, add it here and replace this with cosine. So a co cosine is a different wave function and that's what you would use for the y because it, it measures two different, the, the relationship between two different lines of the triangle. Again, look this up. I, I don't want to go into this right now. I can make another video maybe explaining it a little deeper, but there's a bunch of people who have already made that. So then if we do this, see how it's only moving that way? That's because Let's just make this, let's say 45 degrees. So it's moving at a 45 degree angle. So then we see that it moves, that it moves five pixels at a 40 degree angle. If you watch these numbers um, and you use, um, and then you use um, a negative sign, you'll find that it's exactly five pixels. And that's how you get a sprite to move in a straight line. So the, I know you might be thinking, like, why would I ever use this if I have moved 10 steps? So if you replace, change the motion blocks with variables and you're making like a pen game or something where the sprite, where, where like, um, you have, maybe you, you have a, an AI spaceship which chooses its direction and always moves forwards. So, then you can just say like repeat forever, change the x variable by this, by whatever times sign of direction and then change the y variable by whatever speed that's the same as this times the cosine of the direction of the, of the AI spaceship. And then it would move in a straight line and you would just do that every frame so that it just moves constantly. Um, I do that in pretty much every pen game I've made, just because it's pretty much what you kind of have to end up doing. And you also might use that for like the movement of a character or something. But that's all for this tutorial, and I will see you in the next one.